Hello viewers, 4DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be doing a demonstration on how to replace the brake lines on a vehicle. Show your support by hitting that subscribe button and help promote my channel by sharing your favorite videos on your social media pages. For this vehicle, both front brake lines have failed. Therefore, I will be replacing both. Over time, lines are exposed to the exterior elements and eventually they will rust away, creating a rupture, therefore losing braking power. Normally the master cylinder is broken into two sections, either splitting up the brakes from front to back like this vehicle or having a diagonal split. Starting off, you will most likely need to elevate the vehicle. Here I have this truck on ramps. I can leave the wheels on in this situation as I have access to the components I need to very easily. When driving a vehicle, if the lines do fail, you will lose a substantial amount of braking performance and the brake pedal will feel spongy along with longer pedal travel. If a line were to fail in one section, you will still have half or less braking performance, which will allow you to pull over, but the vehicle is unsafe to drive. The next thing you'll notice is either an oily residue on the ground or somewhere underneath the vehicle, with close relation to the brake lines, besides the reservoir dropping in level. It's a little harder to see, but there is brake fluid residue on the frame and cross member in this vehicle. First, I've pulled back the rubber covers in both fender wells. The brake lines need to be removed from the brake line block. This is just an intersection block between the metal brake line and the rubber flex line. The brake lines come down from the master cylinder to an intersection block on the driver's side. Then from there, it splits between the caliper and also feeds the passenger side. Using a line wrench is recommended. They are basically the box end of a wrench with a portion cut out to fit around the line. These are able to grab onto larger areas on the hex which prevents them from stripping. You can also cut the line off if you're replacing the whole run and insert a socket. The nuts can sometimes become seized so heat such as a propane torch may be needed. Another tip is if the nut and line are rusted together the nut may twist the line off. If you are replacing the whole run of line then this isn't an issue. Other times you may not want this but it will break the line. Finally remove the lines and try not to bend the existing shape too badly as we will be using this after. The line which goes between the driver and passenger side has various plastic clips that needs to be disconnected. Next is removing the line from the master cylinder that goes to the driver's side. It's always good to have a rag handy to prevent any brake fluid from dripping. Do not get any brake fluid on the paint as you do risk damaging the paint. Now pull out the old brake line. Replacement lines do vary. You can buy a length or roll depending on the material. Copper tends to be easier to work with, is corrosion resistant, but can also work harden or fatigue easier. Steel on the other hand is susceptible to corrosion so coatings are applied such as an epoxy or zinc. Stainless steel lines are also an option which can be harder to work with yet is corrosion resistant. Now for the new replacement brake lines. Here I have generic copper line which has fittings pre-installed. Then to the left I also have a flaring tool kit and towards the center is the line cutters. You will need to match the existing brake line diameter along with the fitting type whether it is metric or imperial. First I'll start with bending. There are various types of benders available. It's best to use a bender so you don't risk kinking the line. I'll match up the old and new line, place the line in the bender in the correct position and continue to bend the line. The dies prevent the line from kinking. Apply pressure on the sides maintaining its rounded shape. Use one hand to hold the line and the other to apply pressure closely around the radius. If I were to hold it further away from the radius, this may deform the line further up. The old line did have a flex line installed for vibration and movement. Considering I won't be adding this feature to the new line, instead I'll be using a rounded loop which is intended for vibrations. A vibration may cause a line to crack eventually. Beyond protecting from vibration, the loop also helps with installation, giving you a little extra material to work with when making adjustments around any objects. Don't forget to direct the fitting to each end so it doesn't get stuck behind a bend either. Almost on the first brake line, not all that's left is cutting it to length. Using the cutter tool, set it in place. Remember to cut it about a quarter inch longer to account for the flare, then tighten the knob. Spin the cutter until it's loose, tighten again, spin and repeat until the end separates. Not all cutters have this feature, which is why I have two different examples. Some have a deburring tool to remove the burr from cutting the line. This is intended to prevent any issues when flaring the line. 
simply sticking in the center of the line and rotate back and forth until the burr is gone. I like to hit the end with a file as well just to clean up the cut a little more. Be sure to face the line downwards emptying any filings which may have entered the line. Considering the connection is different from the master cylinder I will need to install a different fitting. I'll explain this further on in the video. Now for the flare. This is a double flare connection. First we will need to ensure the clamp is clean, both the jaws where the line sits and the surfaces that face each other. If there is any dirt or it can't clamp tight enough, the line will slip causing flaring issues. Install the fitting first, otherwise you won't get this on afterwards when the flare is done. The side which is being flared must be on the chamfered side of the clamp. The line should be exposed the same thickness as the edge of the side of the die. There are various dies available based on what size of line is being used, so determine which fits best within the inside of the line. Tighten the clamp, ensure it is tight as we don't want the line slipping. Apply a small amount of oil to the end of the die. This isn't necessarily needed, but it does help with achieving a high quality flare. Insert the dial end into the line. Install the cone tool, which will push the die into place, forming the line. The cone will have a depressed area where it sits into on the die. Now tighten the cone tool until it stops. Sometimes it helps if you have the flaring tool clamped in a vise. Here is the first step of the double flare done. Reinstall the cone tool so the flare can be folded down. Again, tighten it until it stops and if desired, apply a touch more oil which provides some lubrication. Here's the line still in the clamp once done. And finally, here's the final flare done and ready to be installed. Now this line can be inserted between the master cylinder and driver side intersection block. Considering the master cylinder takes a bubble flare which I do not have the tools to produce, I will be using an adapter that can be purchased from an auto parts store that includes a double flare and allows you to connect it to a bubble flare female connection. Install it on the intersection block. Cross threading the connection can be hard but it's still possible so be careful not to do this. I find it's easiest to push the line into the connection first and allow the fitting to follow into position, then tighten with a line wrench. The line may need to be adjusted in the bend slightly as they are hard to replicate 100%. Ensure they do not rub on any adjacent objects which may cause damage to the line. Next I need to bend the line coming from the driver's side. While the driver to the passenger side line was one solid piece it may be hard to reinstall in one length. Therefore I'll install in two pieces with double flare unions connecting the two lines. Depending on the connection this may be illegal where you live so consult with your local laws first. However when the connection is done correctly there won't be any issues. Finally I've already bent and cut the line for the passenger side so now I'll be installing it. Connect the union and snap the lines into the existing clips. Ensure everything is tight and finally we can move on to bleeding the system. Fill the master cylinder reservoir with fluid. There are various fluid types available, so match the one which is required for your vehicle. This vehicle requires a DOT3 type fluid. The type of fluid required should be listed in your owner's manual or will be printed on the top of the cap for the reservoir. I will not be bleeding the brakes in this video as I've done this in previous videos. Therefore, the links to those videos will be included in the description below. I show methods on both how to bleed brakes manually, which requires an assistant, or bleeding brakes with a vacuum pump. New videos are being uploaded every week to my channel, so subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking on the button below the video. This concludes the rest of my video. Be sure to give me a thumbs up and let me know what you think of my tutorial by leaving a comment below. Thank you for watching.